we're going to take a very special journey back to a time when the railway was at the heart of the local community. What would be the effect of its closure on the people who lived along the Bandoran line? And how would the local community be affected when the line actually closed? Balik pottery, the local creamery, the bakery, the cattle industry, all would be affected when the line actually closed. for pilgrims coming from Dublin or Belfast. They got off at Pettigrew Station and then they were bussed out to the island. The train, it was steam engines at that time, where you would have two steam engines pulling carriages. So there was a lot of people on that train coming into Pettigrew at that time. They came off the railway in 1866, um, made a huge difference to the pilgrimage of Loch Derg. Um, it was a bit of an adventure just to get to Pettigrew and to get Loch Derg before the railway arrived, but all of a sudden the railway was within about five miles of Loch Derg. And there grew up a, a little industry which was to do with horses and carriages, ponies and trucks and uh, long carts and uh, horses uh, that uh, congregated at the railway station every time a train came in uh, on any particular day. You had to be in the pilgrimage before two o'clock, so any of the early trains of the day um, the people disembarked and knew that, generally knew that they had five miles to walk so it was a lot handier to um, take a trip on one of these um, horse or wagons and they were known to uh, want to get back very quickly so that they could have uh, take another group out or maybe even a third group so Queen Victoria is the person who is responsible for people going to the seaside. She built her house at the Isle of Wight and she uh, went uh, to uh, brought the children to the seaside and they ran about on the sand, built sand castles and bathed in the sea water and this was considered a very eccentric sort of thing to do up to that period of time uh, but then if it was good enough for the Queen it was good enough for everybody else. I got um, married, uh, my father complete with a black eye, he failed to duck some the night before and there was only my mother and himself and the best man and the bridesmaid and uh, then at Mars got married they went to, uh, to the train in Pettigrew and went off to Mondoran for the day and that was the end. Mondoran didn't really go into his own until the war years. The rationing and all that sort of thing. Some goods were in really plentiful supply in free states like uh, sugar, butter, um, whiskey, various other things and then in Northern Ireland you had uh, tea and uh, a lot of uh, household goods uh, and, uh, and, and, and some other produce that was uh, smuggled over and were eggs and there was an egg station in Belit here and the uh, egg dealer bought the eggs. Everything legal and uh, they used to test each egg what do we like to see what's good or bad and they were packed up in big boxes with a hold of I think about uh, maybe um, 50 or 60 dozen wooden crates and they, they brought them up maybe to several times a week by lorry to the railway station and loaded them and they were sent to England but a, a big amount of those eggs were smuggled across the border so f officially the Northern Ireland hens were laying a, a dozen eggs at a time instead of one we were married first, we had one of the old type one, four big wheels the, the, there was panels on the thing on, on the pram uh, and the mattress was set in that and the baby said this is the normal, this is where the pram was made 
but the, when they wanted to, ladies wanted to smoke it, and they came across the border, and um, they uh, took out the baby and took out the panel to put a liver good sort of smoking into the well, as we call it, uh, of, of, the, of the pram, and put everything back in place again, and uh, walked across the, the border through the customer, and uh, everything was fine. <laughs> the customer that tried and walked right there on the northern side, and he knew this boy we used to be smoking the butter. And what he done, he put the butter onto his head and then put the hat all over it. And my customer knew this. And he could have into the hot meat on a big fire and there was a big chat of them. And there was no time for the butter started to come down his jaws. I had the trousers round you. And, and yeah, the coat covered them. And uh, although, funny enough, the, the custom men, they never, they never uh, made you open the coat or uh, like they would have probably have known what was going on, surely. You got a pound of butter or a loaf of bread and you were carrying it down in, in a shopping bag. And if the custom man was there on the bridge, he would make you open the cost, your, your bag. And if he saw a pound of butter or a loaf in it, he took it off you. And I mean, there was no, there was no questions asked. He just took it and there was no, uh, you didn't get a receipt or anything. Of course, done her shopping up in the north and side. And uh, this night, anyway, she was coming over with the shopping and she forgot to hide the butter, do you see? She had it sitting on the top of the messages. So they followed her up to my grandmother, lived up the street, and she had the bicycle up there. So they followed her up and they took the two bags of messages and the bicycle and all, took it away to the customs hut. <laughs> and she could wait for ages. Finally, she got back the messages and the bicycle, but she never got back the butter. If you were to go, say you were to go to Dublin or Belfast, you stopped in the train, you had no parking, you don't look out and you're not. They shut down and after a terrible time they took the railway away, took it away bit by bit, took it away, threw it away sometimes. It was normal, then they made me go out of town. The train passing, big carriages and all flying up the line, not a sinner at all of it. It was a bit lost in the country at the same time, you know. But they couldn't do it, but it was, it was one bit of that. And that, that I hate, you see, that's what that. It would have required a considerable amount of investment, uh, which wasn't going to be forthcoming. Run out of inspiration of what they might do with the railroad. And uh, so uh, that's uh, brought it to an end. Personally, if you like it, no matter how, um, you might say, like, it's regretful that it's gone, like, that it hadn't outlived its usefulness. And this is what is left of Pettigrew Station and what is left of the Bundoran line. It only took a few weeks for everything to be packed up, sold or stored away. We'll never know what future could have held for the Pettigrew Station and the line itself. But if we stand here on the platform, perhaps we can hear the echoes of the many people who have passed through this station. Pilgrims, smugglers, holiday makers, all part of its history. There's not much left of Pettigrew Station and even less of the railway line. This is a sad end and it is the end of the line for the Bundoran Express, Pettigrew Station and all the other stations along the Bundoran line. Should all acquaintances be forgot and never brought to mind, we'll have one toast before they close the Enniskill line. Farewell to Funtna Old Horse Tram, we'll never see it more. Farewell to Funtna Junction, the good old spot. There are more to Tillich, the junction too. We'll send our greetings kind. We'll never see them once they close, the Enniskillen line. Farewell to Ballin the Mallard and to Enniskillen Town. They sit in a queenly grander with Loch Erne all around. The mountain and the lake scenery around it too is fine. Twill be but 
a memory once they close the inner scaling line. Now let us from the junction go to Honour Irvin's town, then on to Kiesh where in the past sharp customs men were found. They seized our butter, sugar, jam, our whiskey and our wine, but now our greatest loss will be the Enniskillen line. And crossing our, the border we come to Pettigo, a place of ancient pilgrimage as everyone will know. Then on to Castle Codwell, around the lakeside we will twine. What lovely beauty spots did grace the Enniskillen line. Farewell to Bally Shannon and the border town Billick. The Sunday train will often keep us waiting half a week. Our last stop is Bundorn with its sea and sand so fine. We have paid our final tribute to the Enniskillen line. Should old acquaintances be f forgot and never brought to mind, we never, never shall forget the Enniskillen line.